One of the key reasons that I keep coming back to Ningaloo and why I think we need a presence here as researchers is that Ningaloo faces a range of threats that could fundamentally change it overnight. So we've assembled a team across ANU, Department of Parks and Wildlife and also Australian Institute of Marine Science for the past 10 years to survey fish and their habitats along the full length of the Ningaloo reef ecosystem. So with the seascape, we have the seaweed and the coral reef, and they combine together in a sort of interdependent way, where one feeds into the other, the seaweed supplying juvenile fishes to much of the coral reef, and the coral reef providing that space for the adult fishes to move to. We've been able to document the habitats that these fish at Ningaloo prefer, and by knowing that, we can then see how changes in the quality and also the quantity of that habitat over space and time affects changes in the size of the fish populations and also the different species that occupy Ningaloo Reef. We're doing these studies on the Thalassoma lunare, which is a very common wrasse here on the Ningaloo Reef. Uh, so we're actually documenting everything it does for 20 minutes. Where it goes into the seaweed, what it feeds on, how far it's swimming, because we're also measuring the distances with the GPS so we can kind of map and track how each individual is moving along the patches. We've had some bleaching events and some catastrophic loss of habitat, but it's been able to bounce back and partly through the outstanding work of the scientists and managers who understand this system better and better each year, we're able to look ahead, forecast and predict some of the things that are coming down the pipeline so we can prepare and hopefully give Ningaloo the very best chance to bounce back and be resilient to those disturbances year in, year out.